Welcome to this week's episode of Silver and Show. Have you heard of the 1947 doll test case study? If not, I'm sure you've seen a video at some point of children between the ages of 4 and 10 of different races being shown a variation of dolls or pictures of dolls in a range of skin tones or even just two skin tones. Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? And which doll is the bad doll? And, wh and why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and she has two eyes. The resounding sentiment amongst these children, irrespective of race or ethnicity, and irrespective of the time lapse in the conduction of similar test studies since the doll, doll test, is that the white dolls are good, they are prettier, and they are favored more by a wide variety of children, while darker skin tone dolls are seen as dirty, naughty, less pretty, and when given the choice, are less favored by a variety of children. It seems that persistently, since the 1940s, children of all races keep picking up the racial complex that light is right. This speaks to the decades of ethnic underrepresentation and the negative racial stereotyping of ethnic minorities in the mainstream, combined with positive reinforcement of fairer is better. However, in recent times, there has been a wider call to equal positive ethnic and racial representation in the mainstream. We want to see people who look like us and are like us often more in television, in our films, in our children program and in our toys, just to name a few. People want to see themselves represented in the media and merchandise they consume. So this reaches to a much wider issue, which is that representation does matter. And not just for the BME communities, but to any group of people who feel like outliers are portrayed as such. The want for representation is universal, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, share your comments on the topic representation below or on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag SilverTV. Joining us today, we have Saffron Jackson, who has over 15 years of experience in education and is the creator of Zuri Dolls and Toys, the first ever of its kind talking patwa doll, and I'll say Yaman. Welcome to the show, Saffron. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you know, thanks for having me. Is, is that the right thing? Yaman? <laughs> well, it's more like Wagwan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, at least at the same time, we don't have to mix around or beat around the bush because we're original Yardman. Absolutely, <laughs> yard absolutely. <laughs> so, there you go. So, so if, ladies and gentlemen, if anything, I will start to break out into patro and all these sort of things, you know, just um, flow with us at the same time because we're straight from Jamaica. All right? <laughs> straight from Yard. Yeah. So, so, so tell me now, I mean, um, Zuri. Tell us about Zuri and the inspiration behind the name and the brand. But before we go there, come on, Zuri. What well, go on? <laughs> All right. Okay, so do you stop that? Or do you stop her? Uh, she talk a lot, isn't it? Oh, yes, she does. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell us about the, um, what started. Well, um, the brand came about when I was pregnant with yeah. my daughter. And of course, as 
mothers do, especially first time mom, mm. very excited. I wanted to, you know, get as many toys and all of these accessories for my baby. Yeah. So, of course, I always thought, you know, if I should have a girl, I would definitely want to have, you know, a black doll for her because yeah. I did not have one when I was growing up. That's something I was never privileged to so, when so, I was so, growing up. So interesting. So you're pregnant for, with, a, with a child mm -hmm. and the, the, the screen and the shots keep saying it's one child. But you wanted another one at the same time. <laughs> same way. Exactly. <laughs> she wanted two times. Well, I didn't even plan for it. I did not even plan for it. That's the thing. You know, I mean, so it was a case where, you know, I decided, you know, to go shopping for yeah. a black doll. Yeah. And um, I was really, really surprised when I walked into most of these shops and they had no black dolls in stock. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. This, this cannot be true. Because before, I mean, before my, my quest for the black doll, I had no other reason to go and really buy toys and yes. so on. So I, so I had no idea what was going on in the toys industry, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So it was after that I decided to do some more research. Yes. And I realized from my research that there was a massive lack of black dolls mm -hmm. right across the world, but in the UK in particular. And I'm thinking, this cannot be true. This is a multicultural society. Yes. There has to be more representation of our children, you know, different races and different ethnicity and so on. Mm. And as a result, I decided, you know what? I will start my own brand. And of course, the inspiration came, you know, as a result of that. And of course, you know, the name Zuri, it means yeah. beautiful. So how did it, I mean, when you got the name, I mean, what was the inspiration behind the name? Well, as I've said, I want young girls to know that they are beautiful, regardless of their hair texture, mm -hmm. regardless of their skin color, it doesn't matter what shade you are, you're beautiful. And that's a message we should be sending to all girls, not just to white girls. Yes. You know, there are lots of different kids around, ethnic groups around, mm -hmm. and we want them to know that regardless of who they are, they're just as beautiful, they're just as important. Yes. And as a result, I tried to find a name that actually sends the message that I want to transcend yes. to as many people as possible. And so, you know, after researching, I came across the word Zuri, which is Z-U-R-I, which means beautiful in Swahili. Z-U-R-I? Yes. Okay. However, there uh -huh. are variations to it. And the variation is Z-U-R-E-E, -E, which is Zuri, which is my brand. And so that's how the name came about. So as Jamaicans, we always like to put a twist to everything. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We could not be Jamaican without adding something different yeah. to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come back to Zuri in some more time because this whole thing about Zuri. But in your experience as an educator and your interactions a lot with young people, you do a lot of work with young people like with the diaspora and um, uh, what do you call it, the youth arm of the diaspora? Yes. Call, yeah. Um, what are some of the effects of the lack of positive representation of the BME community in the mainstream on young, impressionable minds? Because for you to get that idea, it wasn't because you were pregnant only, but because you had a mindset for young people at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I've always, you know, my job has always been working with young people mm. and I've seen the impact of lack of representation in the schools, mm -hmm. you know, in the community and so on. And I've realized that a number of our kids, they tend to lack self-confidence and yes. self-esteem. And with that, there are lots of different ripple effects, you know, from the lack of self-esteem and self, you know, confidence and so mm -hmm. on. In fact, a number of these, um, the poor results in school, uh, poor behavior mm -hmm. stems from this. And I think that unless there is representation where kids feel valued in society, mm. then we will always have these kind, we will have, we'll always have children who always feel as if they're not important. And then as a result, they will play up their behavior becomes, you know, difficult, challenging. Yeah. Um, they will also find that they give up in terms of their school work, yes. you know, their education. And we know with a lack of education, there are lots of different effects and impact. You know, they end up getting involved in yes. gangs and not only that, they can't find a good job. And, you know, the, 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 the factors, it just continues. It's like so a domino the, effect, so really, so where that is concerned. So therefore, what you're seeing as well is like an identity factor. Absolutely. Hence, Yuri, hence the work that you're doing. But if I make a comparison here now, I mean, you're an educator and um, from Jamaica and mm -hmm. um, understand you had went back to Jamaica one time to make a break. What do you see the difference between the young people um, with their level of identity 
and Jamaican young people. You know, black, Jama black young people in the UK, black young people in Jamaica. That's a good one because, in fact, I've, you know, I've been telling myself recently, based yeah. on what I've seen, yeah. <clears throat> is that I would like my child perhaps to grow up in Jamaica. And yeah. that's the main reason I would like my child to grow up in Jamaica. It's because of the identity factor because of the fact that there are so many positive role models in Jamaica yes. where pe my, my child will be able to look up to people and say, you know what, I can be like her, I can mm. be like him if I, if, if I want to. Whereas in the UK, it's mm -hmm. not easy to find people of ethnic background, especially the, from the black community, in high levels. who are in high levels in society, which is really, really sad. Or put it this way, they are there, but you've got to really Squeeze search orange. to, find, to them. find them they're not in the forefront at all I'm, there's absolutely no I, I you know doubt that they're there yeah you know there are lots of positive people right across mm -hmm. you know our communities in the african community the caribbean community and so on the point is we don't see them yes. we don't hear about them you know whereas in jamaica you just need to switch on the tv Right, you know, and you see them, you and see them, you on see the sports, them constantly. News, the sports, business, exactly. You walk into a bank, you walk into the government office, yes, anywhere yes, at all yes, you go in Jamaica, yes. you will find someone who I, is I in mean, a high I, position. I mean, you're right because Victoria Mutual is over here um, doing their road show. You got the president of Victoria Mutual. You've got the chairman of Victoria Mutual. I understand that you're going to have a minister of finance going to be passing through here. They're all black people. Absolutely, that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. But, but the reality of this, uh, what you say is that you would think of possibly wanting your child to, to be educated in, in, in Jamaica, Jamaica mm -hmm. with that identity factor where you know that, and we know, because we are immigrants in this country, we know exactly where we come from. Of course. We know that we have no issue with our identity because we know what was instilling us from young people. But Saffron, the young people who are in this country, don't you think we have a duty as well to really work on that we definitely have a duty and that is one of the reasons i created zuri yeah. in the first place because i think i owe it not just to my child but yes. i owe it to black kids all mm -hmm. over you know to present something in the toy industry that actually represents them so that they mm -hmm. can feel a sense of pride a sense of value you know and yeah. so on and that's the reason i came up with the whole idea yeah so i'm not saying that you can't find um as i've said before positive black people within the UK, within mm. our community, but they are hidden, so to speak. Mm. You, it's, it's rare, you know, you turn on the TV. When you look into the House of Parliament, yes. come on, how many black people can we count on our fingers? Yes, you yes. know? Well, it, and well it, it's very you, interesting. You walk into a bank <clears throat> again. It's interesting you say that because, and I find this all the while very amazing, there is a, 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 a Gillian Joseph, she's on Sky News, and there's another black lady who's on Sky News. And anytime they come on together, the internet is flooded with black people saying, wow, this is so great to see. Because it's like a once in a lifetime, you would have two anchor on a mainstream at the same time. While in Jamaica, that's normal. Absolutely. It's very normal. And that's what I want for my mm. child. I want her to see it as being normal. I don't want her to be searching and, you know, in order to find someone that looks like <coughs> her and try to emulate them, you know? Mm. That is why, you know, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with people wanting to be like a musician yeah. or a footballer and so on. But if you notice within our community, a number of our black kids, especially the boys, those are the people that they try to emulate, the musicians yes, and yes. the footballers. Why? Because they're the ones that they see. They're the ones that they see that are doing very well, extremely well, mm -hmm. living, look, you know, um, living, um, what should we say now, in, in, you know, in, 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 in the limelight, so yeah. to speak. And that's what most kids want these so days. So therefore, it's the, the media plays a fundamental uh, role there. Of course, the media plays a instrumental role in this huge role so therefore zuri doll and all the other dolls all the other creations which you're up to doing that doesn't seem like the end of it all that seemed like just the setting a stage trust me for a bigger thing <laughs> this is just the beginning did i spoil did i did i, did I disclose something <laughs> Well, I can tell you this much, that yes. this is just the beginning yes. of Zuri. Yes. Because Zuri is about to revolutionize the entire toy industry. Yes. Because yes. 
I am not going to be satisfied just with a Jamaican talking dog. Yes, yes. My aim is to get right across the board. So I'm heading into Africa, you know, other Caribbean islands, yes. you name it. But, Zuri's well, going to have it. Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, I always say that is why I like to get people on the show when they are starting out. So I grow with them. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, because most times, sometimes people want people to come on their show when they are big. <laughs> But I want to get them when they are growing. So we grow together. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now, I'm sure when you invite <laughs> me on the show in the next, let me say, three to four years time, you know, it's going to be totally different, I tell you. That's all. If a parent has a child in this country and they are concerned about the child and their own status, obviously they go and seek legal advice. Yes. But sometimes, like we all know, some solicitors obviously um, don't give actually, um, they don't have any client's best interest. Yes, yes. Or sometimes they're not actually, um, what should I say, competent, mm -hmm. you know, enough to actually them to give the right advice. Mm -hmm. Consumers, um, you know, have been calling for like most equal representation. Where do we have the most capacity for growth in equal representation of all? Is it mainstream media, mainstream merchandise? And who do we call on to enact this sort of equal positive representation? Like, you know? Well, I think it is right across the board. Mm. It, I would not say one is, you know, one should exceed the other. Yeah. It, you know, we expect to see equality in government. Mm. We expect to see, see it in, in the merchandise, like, for example, toys. Why should we walk into a toy shop and see only white dolls? Yes, majority of the population of the UK are actually white um, mm. in, um, descendants and so on. However, England is very, very multicultural. Mm. And especially London is very, very multicultural. So I would expect to walk into a shop in London and I would expect to see diversity. And I do not see that. Yeah. And, and so it is right across the board. We expect the media to be fair mm. and balanced. These days, quite, I mean, and it's not just something that I started just now. Quite often when you see black people in the media, it's usually on a negative basis, yes, especially yes. when you talk about black boys. Mm -hmm. It's always to do with crime and violence or gangs and all these kind of things. They do not highlight the positive black kids which that are, are in normally, our... In which are normally 70 to 80 percent of, of it all. Absolutely. The 10, 20 or the 5 percent who is creating the negative or the havoc normally get the most spotlight. Precisely. Like that. That's the point. The other day I saw um, an image of a few boys who attend Cambridge, mm -hmm. black boys oh, who yes, attend May yeah. Cambridge going around on the internet, you would not see that in mm -hmm. the media. Thank God for social media, yes, because if yes. it weren't for social media, lots of people would not know that we have so many black boys in those institutions. And this is what I'm saying. Yeah. We have positive people, but they're hidden. It's interesting to talk about the media because, I mean, um, we, 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 we just had the terrible incident in Grenfell, Grenfell Tower and really I was down sad. there yesterday Saffron and one of the things that lots of people were talking about they were really upset about the media not just the Prime Minister or the government they actually put the media in that same Absolutely. bracket as not trusting not saying the truth giving a different representation for their own means are we seeing the same sort of thing? I mean, Jamelia was on the television the other day. Um, she was saying she hasn't seen, she found it difficult. Is that a fair thing? <laughs> of course. And that's exactly my point. That's exactly why I created the brand. Mm. So she definitely had a point. But yet, what did the media focus on? They focus on the small negative yes. aspect of it to say that, oh, Jamelia is creating something that's not there. Yes. And as a result, you have all these thralls and all of them literally attacking Jamelia. Mm. It was absolutely disgusting when you, you, you know, when you saw the feedback that came as yes. a result yes, of absolutely. her pointing out something mm. that's so poignant to our society mm. and to our community. Mm. This is something that affects black people. And mm. unless you have a black child, 
you probably would not understand what it is like to yes. be in the minority yes. and to not be represented. Yes. Because, you know, you hear about white privilege and it exists. Yes. Because they automatically, lots of people automatically believe that because it is, they have white dolls mm -hmm. and everything else is there at their own disposal, everybody else should accept it. Yes. That's not the reality for some people. How is Zuri? Well, great. <laughs> let, let's just hear. Let's, let, let's Zuri talk to the camera. Let's Zuri talk to the camera. Okay. That's camera, Zuri. That's Her camera. name is actually Toya. Oh, Toya. Toya. Toya oh, from the Zuri also, brand. Also, let's clarify. So, Zuri is a company. It's a brand, a brand yes. It's a company. And to so tell us about, I mean, look at the camera. Tell us, talk, talk to the people about Toya. Well, Toya is yeah. actually um, a Jamaican doll. She's the very first ever talking Jamaican doll in the world. And in fact, they, they, I mean, um, she was actually selected as being one of the greatest toy for this, for this year. Yes. Um, by by, by um, mybaba.com, which is actually Alibaba. a forum. No, mybaba, oh, my yeah. which is actually a forum for mothers and so on. Yes. And um, on top of that, you know, the kind of publicity, the kind of interest that she has garnered is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea, you know, when I created the doll yeah. that she would have been in such high demand. No, I mean, I mean you know, I've seen um, Facebook um, messages, people from all over the world saying, well, finally I find something or I find someone. And then all of a sudden you realize by just zeroing on Zuri or Toya, you realize also there are other people who are doing it. Absolutely. So, so in a way, it's like it's open a floodgate and, and people dig more. So, okay, you got more all over the place. So it's creating a healthy competition Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we still need, we need more. We yes. need to see these dolls. Yes. And that's the whole point. I mean, you, you will find some of these dolls, mm -hmm. I mean, online and so on. However, you won't find them on the shop, in the shop, like in the retail yes. outlets. Yes. Yes. You won't find them on the high street. Mm -hmm. Which is what I find very disgusting, you know. So, so, so finding the different terms or the different words or the different phrases for Toya, and, and if we can do them one by one and do some translation for a person. <laughs> so the first one is... <coughs> so the first thing she did, yes. okay, so Toya, let me give you a little history about Toya. Yes. Toya is a... Uh, an immigrant from Jamaica. Okay, so we're all in the same so, boat. Really. Exactly. <laughs> so she's now living in the UK. Yes. And of course, like many Jamaicans, she's extremely proud of who she is. Yeah, man. Proud of her culture. Yes. She's proud of her language, you know? Yes. So yes, she may be able to speak standard English, yes. but she prefers to use her Jamaican language because that is what she uses to represent her. Yes. And that's what she feels proud of. Yes. And so when she starts off talking, she says, Wagwan, yes. which actually means what's going on. What's it's just a way on? of greeting people yes. in Jamaican. And um, she continues by talking about her beautiful island. Yes. She talks about the fact that, you know, we love her food, like, you mm. know, the, the rice and, and peas and <laughs> she said the rice and peas and so on, you know, she does and, jerk, she, jerk and she talks about, <laughs> yes, and she <laughs> talks about um, Bob Marley okay. and reggae music yes, and, yes. And, and, and the beautiful beaches and so on. And she's actually inviting people who mm. live abroad to visit her island. Yes. She says, next time I'm going to Jamaica, you for come too, which yes. means you should join her too, right. you know, and so on. So it is really about celebration of culture. It's so celebration so, of who so she is and identity. She's identifying with who she is yeah. and she's proud of it. So tell me, now, Toya will be, you ship Toya all over the world. Yes, I do. Right. So when you ship Toya all over the world, is there some sort of um, note, some translation packet which goes with Toya? No. <laughs> And funny enough, um, no one has ever actually complained about it yeah, because yeah, yeah. even though it's patois or J yeah. the Jamaican Creole, which yeah. is the correct term, but uh, we will use patois for now. Yeah. But even though it's patois, it is actually understood yes. because it's quite very, it's very close to the English language. Yes. And she did not use what we call the basilic of the patois. Yes. She's actually using more of the mesolect. You've got to explain the basilect. Okay, patois. so the basilect is the really raw patois, which most people would not understand if spoken. Yeah. Yeah. However, she's using the mesolect, which is more of the middle ground. So it is a big mixture of English and a mixture of patois. So it's a bit like when Bob Marley said, Irie, everything all right, exactly. everything cool. 
lightly lively up yourself. It just Instantly, chill. people will understand yes. it, yes. And so that's what she's using. Let's just hear Talia again. Let's just hear Talia again. <laughs> That's the camera for Toya. All right. Stop Toya for a second. I have to ask this question. Or maybe it's your secret. I'm getting into your secret. Where do, whose voice is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm well, no, I'm happy to say it actually because when I, you know, I plan to do some promotion in Jamaica because yeah. I intend to launch in Jamaica soon. Yeah. And she will be with me. The voice of Toya will be with me really? as well. Her name is Christina and she actually lives in Kingston, Jamaica. Yes. She's a 10-year-old child yes. who is extremely, as you can hear, a very bright child. Yes. You know what I mean? And um, she is actually the voice. So Toya is not a computer-generated voice. Wow. It's the actual voice of a 10-year-old Jamaican called Christina. And she lives in Kingston, Jamaica wow. right now. <laughs> them readily in the UK. I'm not saying they're not here. They are here. But they're not out there. They're not popular. And these are the kind of things that people, kids want to see. You find the footballers. Mm. You find the musicians. So they can obviously readily associate themselves to it because they mm. see themselves in these people. And so they're the closest thing mm. that they ever come. And you know, that they'll ever be like so in their mind. Hi, I'm Saffron Jackson and I am the founder and creator of Zuri Dolls and the first talking Jamaican doll, which is Toya. And we had the privilege of sitting with Silborn on the Silborn Show today. So we're encouraging everyone to subscribe to Silborn Show on YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook and um, Instagram and just try and support as much as you can. Yeah you know, because he's doing a fantastic job by raising the profile of black or ethnic BME and other, other, other people throughout um, the community, highlighting them and raising their profiles. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribe and you share. Thank you so much.